Recently I got my amateur radio licence, so I'm now 2E0VIR, and I've been thinking about building various transmitters and radio equipment. And the first thing that I did was build uh, a working culpits oscillator. So I saw many circuits online uh, with a very uh, basic kind of functional schematic that give you a general overview of how the, the, uh, the culpits oscillator works. But I wanted to uh, show a, a practical uh, example of a, a culprit oscillator that could be used in a, in a radio. So the crux of it is this bit with the red dotted line in the center. So this is a tuned circuit with uh, an inductor and a pair of capacitors. And this has a, a resonant frequency, a frequency at which it likes to, um, to oscillate at. And uh, in theory, if you input a pulse into this circuit, it would uh, continuously oscillate. But due to uh, to, um, to losses in the, in the circuit, in the components, that oscillation won't continue to forever. It will, it will eventually just die down. So we need an active element to maintain this oscillation once it's started up. So uh, you have um, a transistor. In my case I'm using a bipolar junction transistor. Um, it's an NPN uh, BC337 and uh, yeah, any equivalent transistor would do the job. And I'm basically taking, um, I'm tapping uh, the signal here at the, at the bottom and there's a decoupling capacitor here so you're, you're only getting the, the alternating current passing to the base of the transistor using 100 nanofarads there and I'm energizing the, the tune circuit again at the top here and the transistor has a, a current limiting resistor here at the top and right at the top here is a 9 volts uh, DC uh, power supply so I'm just using a 9 volt battery and you can tap the output signal here, the, so the sine wave comes out here and again I'm, I'm just decoupling that with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And in my little tuned circuit here I've got a pair of 220 picofarad capacitors. In order to get it at the precise frequency that you require you, you will need to probably put a, um, a, uh, a capacitor in parallel with these two. So what I've actually done is, is use a little trim cap on, uh, on my circuit and you can adjust that until you get the precise frequency that you, you require. Uh, obviously this is, is quite important because with, within amateur radio you, you really want to make sure that you are transmitting on the, on the uh, frequency that you want to that you, so you remain within the band plans. So let's have a quick look at our inductor here. Um, just off to the side here I've drawn the dimensions uh, obviously this isn't a scale but it's uh, 8 millimeters in length and the internal diameter is 10 millimeters and it's 7 turns of enameled copper, copper wire and I've used uh, 20 SWG so that's the gauge and let's have a look yeah the only other thing here is um, the biasing for the transistor. So you've got uh, a voltage divider here, just a potentiometer. I find it's easier within a practical circuit to actually use a potentiometer rather than a pair of fixed value resistors. So you can adjust it to get the perfect point, uh, working point for the uh, transistor. It's um, it's just more practical, especially when you're uh, you're building these things at home. The only thing that you need is a, um, a series resistor. I've used 100 kilo ohms here, and that just uh, limits the the voltage going to the base because um, you don't you don't want it to go, go too high. Um, yeah, and that's that's about everything I think. So that's my circuit that I've used for a practical uh, culprit oscillator. And now I'm going to take a look at uh, the actual physical circuit that I built uh, from this schematic and we can have a look at the signal on the scope. 
So I've uh, built the oscillator into a Netgear wireless modem, reappropriated it, and I've replaced the panel there. So I've just got a power switch, power LED, and you can also... Um, I've made it kind of into a basic transmitter. So I've got a, an SMA connector there, a mini one, so that you can attach a, an external antenna. And there's also a, a, a mini jack for audio input. I'll just open this up. A bit of tin foil there, that's just to, to help shield it a bit. And I've gone for Manhattan style construction there. And uh, the bit we're interested in is the culprits oscillator, which is here. So we've got the um, transistor there, that's the BC337. And this is our um, inductor, and that's just uh, hand wound from a 20 SWG wire. And that's the little trim cap there, that little red thing, and that just allows me to kind of uh, get the frequency spot on. I've written on the board there the frequency that it should be set at, so uh, the output from this is uh, supposed to be 14.285 megahertz. And there's just a couple of um, uh, BD139 transistors on the output there, so it just boosts the, the signal up to 9 volts peak to peak and gives a, a larger output there so that it'll actually transmit over a small distance. So let's get the scope on here and we can take a look at this oscillation. As a ground. So the point at which I'm going to observe this signal is so uh, there's the decoupling capacitor from the culpits oscillator, and that's where the sine wave comes out. And I'm just going to probe it there. So this is the signal before it goes into the amplification stages. Hook that on, switch the unit on, and then you can see on the scope there, we've got a nice strong oscillation there. Actually, looks a bit too much. I'd probably, I'd actually, so this, I'm just adjusting the working point there on the transistor. quite uh, sensitive. So that's quite good. So that's roughly 500 millivolts peak to peak and uh, the, it's measuring frequency at 14.2 megahertz but it's fluctuating a bit. The frequency counter on the oscilloscope is not too accurate so it's best to double check that. With uh, I have a frequency counter that I use but you could also use um, uh, a receiver if you have a a commercial radio receiver, you could uh, check the, the frequency on that and that would be much more accurate. Um, so you can see that the waveform is relatively sinusoidal and reasonably stable. There we go. And that is uh, set to our transmission frequency. So by modulating the amplitude of this signal we've um, got ourselves a, a basic AM transmitter. So what I've done is I've put an audio input on it so that you can mix a signal um, and I just have the I have that going to the the base of the the power amplifier, RF power amplifier stage on the end there, the last BD139 and the signal just comes in there and it mixes with the RF to create an output signal. It's quite crude but it was just a kind of um, 
it's just a kind of proof of concept. So I could uh, see if the, uh, the culprits oscillator was functioning correctly and if it would work for this kind of an application. But I'm, I'm quite pleased with the um, the, the purity of the, the sine wave. It's um, There's a little bit of noise on there, um, but that's possibly because I haven't got the shield on there. But it's it's quite yeah, it's quite pure. Okay, so let's just uh, switch the scope off for now, and I'm going to attach. Actually, I just pop my shield back on there. And I'm just going to attach it. Um, so I've got a test oscillator here that I use for practicing Morse, and I've put a, an audio output on it. And I can use that to modulate the uh, amplitude of my culprits oscillator. So I've just got that plugged in on the front there and I've just got a cheapy uh, radio here Ch cheapy shortwave AM radio it's not that uh, exceptional but it will demonstrate for us oh. let's get that tuned in so hopefully we should have uh, 